I'm Annie. And I'm Leah. And this is Lactation Business Coaching with Annie and Leah, where we talk about the smart way to create a compassionate and professional private practice. Let's dive in. Hey there, Leah. Hey, Annie. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I am great. And I'm just realizing, oh my gosh, this is our 50th episode. Can you believe that, that we've been together 50 times? 50 episodes. And you know what? We actually did a couple of bonus episodes, but this is our 50th like real episode of the podcast. And of course, we're like, this is when we're going to talk about um, budgeting and taxes and all of the yuck side of being in private practice. I'm sure there are some people that are like, no, that's the fun part, but it's not I don't know. It's not me. It is definitely not me. I think of budgeting as taxes as like that yuck stuff that like you don't want to think about, you don't want to deal with, but if you don't think about or deal with, you're going to get in trouble. So it's like you just have to push through and and do it. But it's good to go over and and certainly this time of year is always fresher in our minds with tax season coming and I know um I'm busy working on all that stuff right now. So it's kind of nice to be hashing through all of this at this time. Um, what are your thoughts on on budgeting and taxes? Like, is it as yuck for you as it is for me? Yeah, it is. I mean, I think because, listen, my brain is filled with trying to be a great lactation consultant and it doesn't have room in it for the tax code and every year things change. And just, you know, wanting to make sure that everything is being done the right way and also making sure you don't miss out on something that could like save you money. Like I'm all about like, how can I just keep as much of my money as possible in the most ethical way possible? And um, so that's, it's just hard because I'm just not really good at record keeping. I'm not really good at um, maintaining, like remembering to enter things into a ledger or even oh like gosh. online. Like, I mean, <laughs> I might be paperless on other places, but like, as soon as I open up QuickBooks online, my, my brain kind of like explodes a little. Oh my gosh, me too. We're in that same camp together. And I always feel like, why is it so easy to like, I mean, we put so many things in records and all day long with our charting and everything, but I don't know why when it comes to that budget, those numbers, where we're spending, what, when, I don't know, that just all jumbles up in my mind. And I just like, eh, just close the computer and I'll, I'll look at that tomorrow, uh, putting it off one more day, but doesn't usually work out. And it's one of the biggest reasons I hired an accountant bookkeeper to assist me because I was just like, I know that I am not doing a good, a good job at this and not giving it the time that it needs. And I'm just not good at it, you know? So it's like, it's really sapping the joy out of my life. And I know you've done similar, right? Oh yeah. I have a bookkeeper who balances everything every month, matches up all the transactions, makes sure that, um, things aren't get, slipping through the cracks and even things where we can talk about like, okay, you seem to be spending a lot on um, <laughs> continuing education, Annie. Are you sure you need this much continuing education? And I'm like, yes. I don't, you don't know me. Yes, okay. <laughs> like, yes, I this do. What you, but, I have to do this. But it feels so good though, because you should, you know, every month we meet together on, we get on the phone. Um, she has me pull up in QuickBooks. She's like, you're going to pull up your profit and loss. You're going to pull up your balance sheet. And she goes through and explains everything until I started working with her too. I, I did not really know how to even really read those um, yes. in the way I would be like, I can understand like the, the, like the, the big picture, like mm-hmm. I can see the big thing, but now that we're drilling down into categories and having a better sense of how things are getting organized um, where I am spending my money, because I do want to have this, um, we've talked about it on the, on the podcast before, um, profit first, where I really am making sure that anything I spend that isn't necessary, I is actually something I want to spend or need to spend so that I can make my money go as far as it can, 
So I, I don't think I, I, I mean, I was not able to do it without a person. And I would say the same thing goes for doing my taxes. And oh yeah, I actually, for a long time, I mean, I did do the taxes for our family. I did them for me and I did them for my husband and who his like business situation was like so complicated. And I would sit down and I would be like, do not talk to me for the next <laughs> 12 hours. Oh, and I would have like papers gosh. everywhere and I would be like crying and I would be like, oh, this no. is the worst. And finally I was like, we need to just hire somebody to do this. And it was a classic case of like, why though? Why hire somebody when you could do it yourself? And I don't yes. know, Leah, I think you and I've talked about this. Like, why is that such a bad idea? Yeah. And then like, I feel like so many times I look back and I'm like, why did I not do this a thousand years sooner? You know? So it's always so hard to like, take that leap of faith and like hand something over or recognize like, okay, this is truly sapping my energy and, you know, definitely not the best use of my time and could be handed to somebody else. But it's always like that hard, like handed over moment. And then usually you look back and you're like, oh, that w- that wasn't so bad. Yeah. I haven't trusted myself with doing taxes for a long time because I, once it got like more complicated when you have you know, maybe people that are working with you and stuff like that. It just got so complicated. And like you, I'm like, I just want to make sure I'm like, nobody IRS is going to come knocking on my door. You know, I want to make sure I'm doing this ethically and correctly. And at least to have somebody else um, guiding me in the process, because it's, uh, it can get really complicated. And I think some of that comes from like how your business is structured, you know, like some taxes might be pretty easy if you have pretty straightforward structure, but I think they get more complicated with some of the different types of business structure. So when you're thinking about, you know, do I need somebody to help me do my taxes? I feel like that's one area where it changes, you know, or it could change um, if you have like different, some of these different business structures that like an S corp, you know, is definitely a bit more complicated than your straight sole proprietor, you know, those kinds of things. Is is that your experience as well? Yeah. And I think that was probably the first instance where I realized the true value of getting professional help with that. Like not just like, oh, the internet says you should do it this way, or here's, <laughs> here, this is the easy way. This is the cheapest way to do it because, you know, you can read about how, and, you know, I even talk about it in one of my books, like you can go on the IRS website and get an EIN as a sole proprietor. And that's what I did and was a terrible mistake to do that. Um, it, I, it probably cost me money. I mean, you know, in the beginning, I guess like my, my volume wasn't high enough that maybe I didn't notice the loss, but it didn't scale. It didn't, it didn't match my dreams for my private practice. I outgrew it. Um, and then I thought, oh, well, everybody says, you know, like online, you read about like, oh, you should just get an LLC. And then I was like, hang on a second, I'm actually gonna maybe I'll ask somebody. And it turned out that for my specific situation, an S corp was a better idea. And that's very specific to that. That meant somebody looking at my QuickBooks and somebody talking to me about my systems and where, where my revenue is coming from. And also what state I live in and saying this, this is the entity that you need. So not crowdsourcing that. And I'm really, really glad that I did that because it just, it's a relief not worrying. Did I do the right thing? I'm like, no, no, no. I did what the person who knows better than me told me was the best idea. I agree. I think it's so helpful to have that consultation with an accountant and lawyer and really figure out what structure is the best for the state that you're in and the type of situation that you're in with your business. And, you know, we've talked about this so much, like you said, what's scalable. If you have big aspirations and dreams, you think there's a tiny hint in your mind of this big dream of something different or bigger than what you're doing now. It's so valuable to have that foundation. Um, going into it. But, you know, it's not just about taxes. You know, when we get down to the taxes, it's all about, like you said, like the record keeping that we're doing month to month, but also like the business expenses and the cost of doing business. 
I know we are also going to talk about business expenses and cost of doing business and all that like granular stuff about money we spend inside our businesses. But before we do that, we want to just take a moment to remind you about our monthly deeper dives. They're on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. We had one just last week with Nichelle Clark. It was amazing. We talked all about her private practice and we got into like how you can be more efficient with your time. It was amazing. Um, you can actually catch the replay inside of our vault. Um, you can also see our past dives that we've done. You can check out our next month's dive in April. It's going to be with Rachel O'Brien. So we're really trying to bring in people who are doing private practice or have great advice for us uh, because you know, we want to learn from experts and we also want to be learning from each other. And definitely when it comes to what I need to spend my money on in my business, I totally want to be learning from other people because otherwise I will just buy all the things all the time. Absolutely. It's so true. And, you know, I feel like our business, we've talked about this before on the podcast, it's so isolating, you know, especially if you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of other LCs. And I just love the way our deeper dives gives a chance to like, just sit down with another LC who's doing this and like, how are they making it work for them and things they've figured out along the way. Those deeper dives, they can be so helpful. But I know one thing that has helped me, and I think we've talked about it maybe one or two other times when we're talking about like budgeting and taxes and everything was the concept of like business expenses versus the cost of doing business. Because at first, when when that first was presented to me, I was kind of like, no, aren't, isn't that the same thing? Like, aren't you just saying the same thing in two different ways? That was in my baby entrepreneurship time. Um, I'm now a toddler. <laughs> but I... I really got tripped up on that because it just seemed like the same concept. And I I feel like, Annie, you explained this so well. And I hope that you can share with our audience in case they're also thinking, hmm, what is the difference between a business expense versus cost of doing business? Can you tell us more about that, Annie? I can, because it's something that I actually feel really strongly about. And so a cost of doing business is money you have to spend. Otherwise you don't have a business. And so you cannot be a private practice lactation consultant without liability insurance. You cannot be a private practice lactation consultant without having HIPAA compliant or the, if you're in Canada for PIP EDA, whatever compliance, privacy compliance, you don't have a private practice if you're not paying for those things. That's, and that's just the, yeah, they're the like fact. the non-negotiables. They have to yeah, happen. And it's bad news because what you're thinking when you hear that is like, great, I'm starting in negative. I'm starting out my business in the red. And that there is no, I don't think there's any business that you can go into where you're going to start out ahead. You're going to have to make certain investments so that you have what you need to, to run your business and to have a business. Business expenses are things that you might look at as I could I could do without it. I would like to have it. It it actually makes me better at providing services, but they are not things where if if you have to wait to buy it, you're going to be okay. And I think a great example of that would be a, you know, super fancy charting platform. So there's a lot of them out there. You know, you can you can spend, you can you can go for a fancy one with all the bells and whistles and be really happy with it, but you might say, "You know what? I'm going to wait until I have more volume. And for now, I'm going to pay with my time and say, okay, I'm going to do something DIY, like through like Google Workspace or Office 365, where it's part of a HIPAA compliant email that you're already paying for. And you're just using the additional services that come with that. So you're leveraging your cost of doing business into something that becomes a, you know, does a lot more that's helpful. And you might say, but once I reach this revenue threshold, this income goal, whatever it is, this number of consults per month, I'm going to splurge on a platform that costs more money and and does more for me. So that that's the difference that I really see. What do you think are are some of the things that you look at as non-negotiables versus things you like to have? 
Yeah. Well, I definitely think because I do um, home visits, like a good scale is really a non-negotiable for me. I want to make sure that I can provide accurate weights, um, especially in our area, because some babies go that two weeks to two months with no check-in. And I cannot tell you how many times that scale has probably saved a baby's life practically. And I do feel like, you know, the equipment that I'm carrying with me, like some of it is, you know, fluff and stuff. Like I don't have to have it, but obviously I need to have gloves. Nowadays I need to have a good mask. So there are some things like that, that you might think, oh, this could end up being a business expense, but some of them really are non-negotiables. Like you're not going to be able to do an oral exam unless you have gloves and good ones that don't taste bad. (laughs) So, you know, it's like there are some things there. But I do feel like this is a really good um, place to remind ourselves to have systems to track all of this. Because um, if you don't have a bookkeeper, which, you know, both of us spent a lot of years not having assistance in this area. And I did you know, as much as I hated it, and I probably wasn't very good at it all the time, I had to really create some processes for keeping up with some of this. So like I made an Amazon business account so that at the end of the year, if I couldn't remember, or I didn't like write down, oh, I bought, you know, 14 boxes of gloves, and I bought, you know, this and that. I was like, okay, I can pull open my Amazon business account. And I know that everything on there was only purchased for the business. So I know that's all my like business purchases. And just even little things, things like that, because we do have to make it easier on ourselves. You know, our hearts, our minds are oftentimes just caught up in the families that we're working with and, you know, to, to scan that receipt or make sure we get this, you know, expense notated in the proper places may not always happen. But I think there's, you know, definitely some hacks and and workarounds that at least you can make it a little bit easier. So I feel like the cost of doing business stuff is pretty easy for me to track because it's like, it's just going to happen. I know it's there. It's like, it's just non-negotiables. I feel like sometimes those one-off business expense things, they get lost throughout the year sometimes. I have to go back and kind of hunt through my bank account and like, did I, did I have anything extra? So do you have any ways that you track some of that one-off stuff? Like maybe not something that you buy all the time, but you, you, what, system do you have in place or do you have a system in place to kind of make sure you catch those? My system is super simple. I have a completely separate business checking account and a completely separate business credit card, which is not how I did it in the beginning. I just opened a bank account and I was like, I'll just deposit my checks in here and then add them up and do a spreadsheet at the end of the year, which was part of the thing I was doing when I was locking myself in the room crying every year at tax (laughs) time was I was like adding things up. And so this method saves me because it's preventing my, my personal income from mingling with my business income. It's a wall to prevent me from spending my business money on personal stuff without thinking about it. So Mm. with having an S corp, when I give myself money out of my business checking account, that actually gets recorded. Like I have to pay taxes on that. So I really have to think about, do I want to give myself more than what I'm already paying myself on payroll? So, so that really helps, but everything, everything goes through the business checking account and, and every, but everything that can go on a business credit card goes on a business credit card the reason for that is because I get cash back. I love, love, love <laughs> cash back. I'm a little bit addicted to cash back. Heck yeah. And then what I do is I make sure that I pay my balance in full um, twice a month. So I look at it, um, I pay it on the 15th and I pay it on the on the first of the month to make sure that I am always keeping a zero balance on those credit cards. And that also keeps me in check. And I have to think yeah. about when, if I want to make a big purchase, I have to think, Okay, I'm gonna have to. Can I pay for it this quarter? You know, can I pay for it in this in this pay cycle? You know, as I'm looking at it, can Mm -hmm. I afford it right now? Like when I I recently bought a new Tanita, I had the Marsden and I liked it, and I had, but I had like some problems with like my Marsden, and um, 
like the feet kept falling off. I just think I got a lemon because I <laughs> like Marsden was like, we have never heard of this happening to anyone. Whoa. I have not seen anyone in any of the other groups talking about this happening to them. Yeah. Oh my God. So I think so I just weird. got like a bad one and I tried getting it fixed and Marsden wouldn't replace it. It was out outside the warranty. So then I'm like, all right, you know, I'm going to buy a new scale and I'm going to buy a Tanita because then I, I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to get something new. Like if I, but then I had to think like, I'm going to put it on my credit card, but that doesn't mean it's not, I I don't have to pay for it. I can't. And so I had to wait until I could pay for it with, you know, pay it back. Cause I, the, the thing that can really hurt you with credit cards is if you carry a balance and yes. so you could sign up for a credit card that has, they'll offer you like 0% interest rate for 12 months, but you have to read the fine print because some of them will say, but if you miss a payment, if you miss a minimum yeah, payment, they'll bump you up to like 18%. Like, yes. So high. I did that as a mistake when I was really I mean, young. You really have <laughs> I to. I think everybody's that. done that once, but totally learned my lesson on that. And I do the same thing. I have a just business checking account and that is so helpful. I'm so glad that is one thing I did from the get-go and it has really helped me so much because only business stuff goes through there and I know anything on there and I try to I use it for everything. There will be the one-off thing that, you know, I random purchase um, something. I'm like, oh, wait, this is, you know, a business expense, you know, and, but otherwise I try to put everything through there and it really does help. And then, you know, having just that one account can all connected in QuickBooks and all of that, it makes it so much more streamlined. And I feel like, you know, it's, if you're starting out right now, just do that from the get go, even though it's a little, you know, it just takes some extra time to go set up a bank account and get a credit card and all of those steps it does really make a big difference. And I too have one of the reward cards as well. So I try to run as much as I can through that because it is fun to like, yes, I want my money. Pay me. <laughs> I like it. I know. I, I never it. use it. They're always trying to get me to spend it on like like coffee or like turbo tax. And I'm like, no, no, no. no. I want my cash. lower that account balance, please. Yes. Thank you. And done. Yes. Like pay me my money. Uh, yeah. Th- that's a great way to also like, I don't know, feel good about what you're doing for a purpose. You're giving yourself money back. And I don't ever have to pay cash for anything. I can't think of um, a situation where I ne- I would need to pay cash. I mean, occasionally, um, for parking, there oh, it might be yeah. a cash only parking garage, and when that happens, I'm just like, Whatever. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm not yeah. saving that receipt. I, sh- I could save the receipt. Yes, I but- could take a photo <laughs> of it and upload into QuickBooks. And I'm like, yes. you know, there are some places where I don't need to chase every penny. Right, life is yeah. too short. I don't need to write get a receipt for the tip that I gave you for parking my car. Yeah, I have some it's stuff fine. like that. Yeah, like random, like sometimes I'll like go buy some stamps or something and I'll forget to pay for it on my credit card and I'll be like, oh, whatever, you know, it's just a pack of stamps, not a big deal. Yeah, there's definitely those one off things, but it really is helpful to have some systems in place if you if you use a different system, just be thinking about that from the get go. I I feel like that's something that, you know, I feel like we're always like lessons learned from Annie and Leah's past. <laughs> All the and, things and, we did that were the wrong thing to do. And we keep learning. We learn from each other. Every time we instantly. record the podcast, both of us are like, oh, I hadn't thought about it th- that way before. So like we're yes. literally learning right now. And in the deeper dives, we always learn things from our guests. Oh my gosh. So, so, much. so please come to the next one. You can come live. You can listen to the recordings. We have some membership options where you can, um, you know, register and make sure you never miss one, sign up for our vault. And you can find all of those at learn.anniefrisbee.com slash lactation business coaching, all one word. Um, everything for our deeper dives is in there. We're now coming up on, um, our second, we're in our second year of, of these deeper dives and you can get our vault and listen to everything from last year. And there's some golden so stuff. In there. I good. should go back and listen to some of those. I again. know. I mean, some of the ones that like, I don't know, I just feel like I, I left there a changed person. And that sounds mm-hmm. like so cheesy, but there were some really, really great and moving episode or not, I guess they're not episodes, but meetings that we had all together and just the amazing people that show up and share what's working for them, what's not working for them. And just to see that community, even though we're all so distanced right now, I just love the community that is there and we all support each other. And we have a lot of 
regulars and I just love to see everybody's faces. So you should definitely come and join us. There's so much fun. It's great to be on them live. You can ask questions. We have so much interactive stuff going on during the deeper dive. So I love that aspect of it. But if you can't, like no big deal, you're going to get so much value out of hearing all the amazing questions that people share. It's just like probably something I feel like all my new moms are always saying like, I don't know what to ask because I don't know anything, you know? So sometimes it's nice to hear like, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that question. But now, man, I needed to ask that question too. So I can't wait to see you guys there and definitely sign up. um, And we will be with you next time. Good to see you, Annie. Bye, Leah. Bye. Thanks for listening. To learn more about our monthly deeper dives and how to support our podcast for as little as $1 a month, visit lactationbusinesscoaching.com. Don't forget to leave us a rating and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.